So noisy campaigns, high tension, low expectations with economic mismanagement, poverty, insecurity, rising crime and a falling standard of living top of the issues. Concerns about those issues have led many young people to turn away from the traditional to the newer parties for their political answers. Parties led by politicians they believe appear to have strong convictions and seem to favor drastic political, economic and social reforms. One of the front runners in that regard is Peter B of the Labour Party. He's been on the hustings taking part in a town hall event today at the University of Abuja. And those are the pictures you're looking at there. Well, for more on this, I'm joined now by the Director General of the Labour Party's Presidential Campaign Council, Akin Oshuntukun. Thank you very much indeed yeah, for coming in. I, I know you've had a very long day today, so we really appreciate your taking the time to come in to talk with us. How smoothly are things going for the Obi Dati campaign at this late stage? How smoothly? Mm. It's going on well. Um, nothing is critically amiss. Uh, it's not you, whatever comes along the way you grab, there is nothing that has been abnormal or any encounter that is extraordinary. Or so far, it's a normal campaign season. The only difference that, uh, con the only difference, and that is in contrast to previous uh, campaign, right, is the gulf that separates the candidates. Mm. So our candidates. The yawning are, gulf, is it? Yeah, the yawning gulf. Mm. So, I mean, if you want me to, do I need to go for? Well, I mean, it's it's your yeah. chance to talk yes, to us yes, about yes, that yes, gulf. Yes. What I mean by yawning gulf, mm. uh, the other two tickets you refer to as frontliners. Well, you know, they started, you know, they presented themselves in their first, first outing as a fundamental challenge to the notion of Nigerian national unity and integration. The, the, the ticket was ab initio negative. It was negative, uh, you know, from the premise mm. of anybody who is interested in the integration and unity of Nigeria. It was a threat, it was a fundamental threat. And I'm sure you know what I mean by that, the composition of those two tickets. Mm. Against the background of the divisiveness that Nigeria has had <coughs> in the past seven years, often likened to the division during the civil war, you would think that anybody contesting for the presidential election will use that background as to, to present a mitigation of that not to exacerbate it. If you have... Do you think they are exacerbated? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I mean, it's so straightforward. Mm. Uh, one of them is well, PDP, for instance, and against the principle of rotation of power, you know, which, are, which has demonstrated the utility, you know, <coughs> of setting Nigeria on the path of political stability and integration. You now add a candidate, right, that is challenging that notion Mm. That principle that has served Nigeria very well, and needless, needless is so. Right. So, if, if you are challenging that principle, what in essence you are challenging is the national unity and integration of Nigeria. You are posing yourself as an obstruction, you know, rather than facility of realizing that objective. Um, the president who is living. Right, share the same constituency as that of the, uh, the presidential candidate of the PDP. And the notion that it was that, look, once this incumbent leaves, it goes to the south, mm. right, in the spirit of equity, justice, and fairness. So what argument will that candidate or that ticket now use you know to post itself as a utilitarian ticket yeah well you, you may have a point now, there. the second but one of course, i mean the point is that the the election is I and mean, we're getting on with it now yeah we're going on, yes you know and it is te it is testing mm. it's putting nigeria through an unnecessary stress test mm. right it's like testing nigeria to the limit what do i need to do to make this country tear asunder that is it that those are the kind of 
inadvertently or that mm. you know that is being posed that is the question that is being asked by that kind of ticket now you have the other one right who what you gave with supposedly gave with the right hand took back with the left and that is the notion of the same faith ticket again against the background of what this country has endured in terms of religious crisis mm. <coughs> division you know polarization how do you then deliberately choose to aggravate that problem in the name of win right people usually say that look it's better to lose doing the right thing rather than to win doing the wrong thing for these two tickets it seems that is not their uh, case you know that uh, these politicians look to the next election mm. while statesmen look to the ne next generation so both tickets right from the world go were con congenitally defective with regards to the kind of nigeria we should be looking forward to that's a very interesting analysis but one that i i think is probably um a lot of people needed to be reminded of what you're saying now but but beyond those two because as i said i mean they're getting on with the campaigns and they, they have a lot of supporters but in nigeria what's still right yeah. is that they keep on revealing one another as criminally unsuited to the office they are aspiring both of them have cases in the court lurid details accusations allegations of corruption one is even talking about drug you know, narcotics trafficking mm. Both of them took themselves to the court and treated Nigeria to this show of shame. And then outsiders will be looking at, this is what the presidential contention election is about in Nigeria. Is there a choice between these two? Right? They themselves, by themselves, they are emphasizing their unsuitability for the office they are aspiring to and challenging Nigerians not to do the right thing. Mm. The right so things of God to reject it. So let's turn to your candidate, I yeah. mean, and, and your party. What are you actually counting on to win this election? Are, are you counting on what you just told us? Or are you counting on the fact of the large youth vote? Obviously, you won't get all of them. Um, or are you hoping to spring some other surprise and buck the trend in previous elections? Of course. You know, they are going to bump the trend. And it's not us, really. It is the younger generation. <coughs> and it is typical of all societies. Right? And I will quote uh, Fanon, Franz Fanon in that respect. You know, he said, out of relative obscurity, each generation must discover its, its destiny to, to betray or fulfill it. Now, I dare say that the younger generation of Nigerian youth have discovered their destiny. You know, their destiny is to influence decisively, right, the way the outcome of the election we are facing, right, and the opportunity is there all over. The so, it is not they own the campaign; they own our campaign. That is the truth, right? It is not that we are they own it, and that's the way it should be, and that is what that is what it should. Be. It is about their future. It's about their present and their future. And they, they have, you know, uh, you know, latitude to choose the kind of future they want for themselves. Nigeria is, an, is at an inflection point, almost what you call, can, can call existential crisis. There's so much any society can take. Right? Like, if the, the, this government has pushed Nigeria up to a state that people may be at the edge of the cliff. That a little bit push, and that is it. And that is what will happen if the other, I mean, that is the promise mm. of the ticket of PDP. And now, of course, we look at our own uh, ticket. It's, look, look at the performance of our presidential candidate at Chatham. And we're looking at pictures now <coughs> that you took earlier today, not you personally, yeah. but, you know, pictures that, that were taken by Arise News. This is at Banex Plaza. Uh, the pictures we're looking at previously was um, at Abuja, University of Abuja, and now th that's at University of Abuja. The other one was at Banex Plaza, and I mean that's Banex Plaza there. You, you can see the, um, the 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 absolutely mammoth crowd, um, but at the same time, I, I have to ask you this: while we're looking at those pictures, mm. in terms of 
whether this vote in your assessment will be free and fair because we've heard INEC repeatedly reassuring the populace that the use of technology will help ensure the ballot is secure and is not marred by fraud, fraud or rigging. But beyond that, we know that there have been cases of politicians paying voters to vote for them, even at polling stations. I mean, does that worry you? Or are you one of those who believes that the redesign of the Naira, for instance, has forced enough of a cash crunch that will make vote buying difficult? Well, you know, it worries me. And one of the evidences was provided by the presidential candidate of the APC. I think the day before yesterday or yesterday. Where yeah, is, on Wednesday. Where he said the current, uh, currency chain policy was targeted at him. How do you interpret what he has said? If you, are, don't, if you do not have the intention of buying people, of using crass, crass you know, employment of you know, currency of Naira, you know, to buy people, why should you feel targeted? The only sense it makes is that he is guilty as charged. Right? Um, no, but I mean, he, he's not the only one who made. I mean, we had um, um, Rabbi Yukwankwa so sitting where you're sitting last right. night, and he made the point that he disagrees with that policy because beyond the fact that, you know, of whether it's affecting politicians that it, it is hurting a lot of ordinary people in this country who, who have not people who live in rural areas. I mean, he sees his constituency as the grassroots. And a lot of those people are outside the banking system and so on. And they really have no, I mean, they can't go over the counter and get the money changed. Mm -hmm. So they're hurting a lot. I mean, well, so you could make the, the no, argument no. That, that he was also speaking in that regard. No, 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 no. no. That's a better response to he's doing so uh, as, a, as a public opinion leader. This man, I mean, the, the presidential candidate, was talking for himself, right? That like it is meant to undermine his prospects at the election. That was his concern. He didn't sell people, you know? So that's the difference between what he said and what Kwakwansu said. Mm. Right? So there's a qualitative difference between the two. He's saying, Kwakwansu didn't say that, look, I'm going to be disadvantaged Personally, if if you want to restrict the, the usage of money, you know, to influence the election, so that is let's get that clear. And he made to reinforce what he was saying. He also talked about fresh scarcity. Somehow, yeah, he it, did. it's difficult to make sense of these allegations. But you see, they, that there is there is there, <coughs> there are dark crevices, crevices in Nigeria that those kind of fulminations come from, right? That was the first time I was here that the first scarcity is contrived and it's also targeted against a particular candidate. And then the candidate, this, the government, this candidate is accept, uh, accusing of being behind this policy. It's actually the government of his party. So how crass, how you know, can you get? You know, I mean, it's like, I don't know it's perplexing. Mm. So and of course, President Buhari yeah, yeah. himself said, mm. right? And to, the, to some extent, there is you know, equivalence between the two. He said, the target, the currency change policy, they are not going back on it. Yeah, he did. And he, he said that it is, you know, to, uh, to negate anybody intending to mobilize resources and talks to influence the election. Resources, resources of God being money. Mm. And then you have the presidential candidate of, of his own party saying that what the president said is targeted at his ticket. So this is, this is the folly we find ourselves. Mm. I'm sure that we are going to hear PDB's own. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but just, we've got about 30 seconds, sadly, before we have to go. It's really nice talking with you. I've enjoyed listening to you. What's your biggest fear? What do you reckon could really throw a wrench into the election works for your presidential candidate? What could obstruct it? Or what? Well, what could, what could throw a wrench? What well, could upset see, it? Two, what two, could things, two things I'm worried get about. Get in the way. Yeah, two things I'm worried about. One is that one candidate is 
uh, certain, is confident enough to say that regardless of the beavers, the technology that potentially can potentially utilize you know money mm. to compromise the integrity of that of that uh, of that election. There must be something that he has seen that the rest of us have not seen. Right. Second is the outcome of the tribunal judgment given yesterday, I think, nullifying the victory of the Ocean State government. Yes. Saying that it, there was a proven case of overvoting. Yes. Now, if Beavers. It raises is, questions. What, exactly. That's about, a very good point. About it, uh, the, the, that's a very good it. point. And, and I, I'm a, a, on that note, I have to run. But that's a very good point that you raised. And, and that's something that really should be looked at very critically. Akin Oshuntokun is the Labour Party's presidential campaign council director general. And I want to thank you very much indeed for coming in. Thank you. Thank you. That's it for this edition of Arise Prime Time. Join us again next week from me and the entire team here in Abuja. Bye bye and thank you for watching.